Hi there, welcome back to Pretty Much Flawless. Today in this video, we'll be looking at a garage light. This is a three LED panel garage light that's very bright. But for some reason, one of these panels has gone out. Let's take a look and see if we can fix that. So now I'll be able to turn it on and see what happens. So only one LED is going right here. So we'll take this apart and see if we can diagnose the problem. Alright, so now we'll be begin dismantling the light by taking out these four Phillips screws here. So now after removing the four screws, the top should just pop off here. Yeah, it's connected by wires. We'll cut those wires. There we go. So, there's the hot wire, here's the neutral, and this is where the wires go to the LEDs here. So we'll remove this circuit board and see what's happening. There we go, so now we get the circuit board out. Or at least turned around. So the connections to the LEDs look pretty good. So I don't know if it's that. So we'll check to see the voltage output of these of output terminals on the LED. So now, I will strip these two wires, put 120 volts on, and measure the voltage output here. So now we will apply 120 volts of power to the cables here and measure the voltage outputs. Here we go. So you can see one light is working. We'll measure the uh, voltage across. It's like minus 71 volts. Let me turn these around real quick. Seventy-one point eight volts on this one. Fifty point six volts on this one, and that's the one that's uh, working right now. And this is seventy-four point six on this one right here. So all getting voltage. Right now, it appears that our circuit board is good. So I'll put that back in, and we'll start taking apart these LEDs. So at this point in the video, you might have some questions. I will try to answer them here. If you have more questions, leave them in the comment section down below. So one question would be, why were some of the outputs up to 70 volts, and why was the one at 50 volts? So the one was being loaded down by the LEDs. The LEDs will take a certain amount of current, and that will load down the power supply. But the other two, the LEDs were not working, so it was up to 70 volts. So, I hope that explains that. Next thing. So all the LEDs on that light are wired in series, and you're probably wondering why. And if you don't know what series is, I'm giving you a basic example of what this is right here. So right now, these are two LEDs. They are wired in series. So what happens is, basically, the the, here's the positive right here. It flows through this one LED, flows through the other LED, and goes to negative right here. They're in series because they're right by each other like right here. So a disadvantage to this is, as soon as one of these LEDs blow, as you can see, there's no connection to this LED to ground. So basically what's gonna happen is this light's not gonna light right here. Next thing we're gonna talk about is parallel circuits. So let's say you have uh, two LEDs. 
right here in parallel. So basically both of them are connected to positive, both of them are connected to negative. And what happens if one of these LEDs were to burn out, then the other LED will still be bright because you can have a connection between positive and negative. So the, a disadvantage to this is it draws twice the amount of current. So let's say this one LED drew 20 milliamps and this other LED drew 20 milliamps too. So if you, you have to you can combine those and this would be drawing 40 milliamps. However, if you have the series circuit, since they're both connected to each other, they draw 10 milliamps. So if you were to have your light bulb in parallel and there is 32 little LEDs, I'm not quite sure how much current they each draw, but that'll eventually rack up. You need a much bigger power supply on your light bulb. So this way, it's more of a cheaper and I guess cost effective way. So now we'll take apart the LEDs here. Over. Need a bigger screwdriver. So now we can start testing the LEDs. So what we'll do, what we'll do for that is use our multimeter and put it on continuity here. So we'll just measure across these LEDs right here. Oh, switch them around. There you go, sound lights up. So we go to the next one. Sound lights up. It does look like that one's lighting up. You can reverse your probe here. Nope. Sound might be a problem. That one lights up. 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 That one. That one. That one. That one. Looks like this might be another bad one here. So we're pretty sure it's this one and this one right here. So now we will break these LEDs off. I just haven't had much success desoldering them, so do these. There we go. And you can see there's two copper pads there. So I'm pretty sure if we jump for these two copper pads here, then this whole thing should work again. So we'll try that. Let's see if it works. So we'll see if jumping those connections fixed it. Look at that. Looks like two are working. That's great. So now that's all I have to do is do this last one here. So now we will test all these LEDs using continuity. If you don't get it, if it doesn't glow up on the first time, you might have to reverse your the polarity of your leads here. But that one's good there because I had the polarity right in the first place. Looks like that might be a culprit.
the uh, bad one probably. So now I think pretty sure all these LEDs will work. So we'll turn on the power and see what happens. So you can see that, you can see all these LEDs are working right here. So let's put the top back on, and this will be done. So we are going to re-solder these to this over here. So I'm going to put some heat shrink on. You always want to remember to put the heat shrink on first, so then you'll have to cut your joint and put the heat shrink on later. now we will put this back together so we have to make sure these rubber gaskets are in the proper holes here and try to get this lined up yep that's all good now I'll start putting the screws in so now we'll flip it over so now we can put back together the lights here so some this uh, rubber gasket might have popped out and you want to make sure that gets put back in. It's a nice square to help seal everything. There you go. Put the plastic back on. Put some screws in and tighten down the screws. All right, we'll do this side now, the same thing. Put the rubber gasket back in. Maybe I'll push it down a little bit. Put the plastic back on. So now for some final testing. There you go, you can see all the LEDs are on. And that's another pretty much flawless job. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.